Oh, thank you. A couple of announcements. The following people um, who have spoken to Colin about being on the committee, those are Cliff Dunn, Renee Walling, Mark Olson, Roger Burns, Rachel Axe, and J Jason Spitzer. The committee will be meeting in this room at the conclusion of today's meeting. And then secondly, before we get to the actual uh, time limit debates on the rest of it, we're also going to have an informal discussion about EPH, EPH plus, and all the other various uh, scenarios in this room at the conclusion of tomorrow's meeting. That will not be run by business meeting staff, but just to make you aware. We are now at B22, which is December is good enough. Mr. Breitbart, for what purpose does the member rise? I move that in all debates for the remainder of this meeting, if the total debate time is 10 minutes or less, each person is limited to one minute per speech. If it is more than 10 minutes to two minutes per speech. Yes, that's going to be a suspension of the rules, so it will require a two thirds vote in favor. I heard a second. Mr. Breitbart, do you want to make a speech in favor? <laughs> All too often I have seen some, uh, with a debate time of 10 minutes, one person spend five minutes saying nothing very slowly and using up the entire side's time. Is there a speech against? Mr. Yallo. Mr. requires a two-thirds vote. Yeah. <laughs> We sometimes have complicated motions with short debate times. If it takes somebody two or three minutes to try and isolate what are the key points either in favor or against that, I believe that I'd rather hear a really good two-minute speech than a bunch of really lousy 30-second speeches. Is there another speech in favor of the motion? All right, Goldstein. Um, it's actually a relatively simple equation. If you, everyone believes that, if you believe you need more time than the one minute, you can make a motion to have more time than the one minute. And at that point, I mean, I think that that's, that makes a barrier to people basically saying again a lot for uh, nothing for no time. Is Miss Secor, for what purpose does the member rise? <laughs> That was in favor. You're very confusing today. I'm kind of awake, I promise. I'm Kate Secor. As someone who's actually relatively new to this meeting, despite the amount of times that I've talked, um, <laughs> I think it's really important to give everybody a chance to stand up and say what they want to say. And sometimes people that are new to the meeting are a little incoherent. But do we really want to take the chance of uh, keeping people from talking just because they feel like they can't express themselves in a very short amount of time? Frankly, if more people want to talk when we run out of time, there is in fact a motion to extend the debate. And that prevents us from having a motion every minute. I'd like to keep talking. Can I have a motion? I'd like to keep talking. Can I have a motion? We can just move to extend the entire debate and give everybody more time instead of having to do it at every individual speaker. Here, 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 here. Mr. Blog, that was a speech again. Mr. Blog.
Gary Blog, I'm in favor of it because I want to have as many people be able to speak on against, in favor of, or against any motions they want. I want to hear more opinions. I don't want to hear just one person's opinion dominating an entire block of that uh, entire block of the time allotted for or against a motion. I want to hear more opinions. And uh, I, there are several people in this room who will take up an entire time, uh, the entire time, and uh, I'm in favor. Mr. Buff, is this a speech ag against? Warren Buff, I move to amend by substitution that if fewer than five people have spoken in favor or against a motion, that debate time automatically be extended by 30 seconds to allow an additional speaker until five have spoken. Is there a second? Is there a second? Hearing none. <laughs> Mr. Cronengold, for what purpose does the member rise? I wish to make a motion. Uh, I have a question for parliamentary inquiry. Can we take a yeah. seal for a second? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Cronengold, please yield for the parliamentary inquiry. Thank you. Right. Question of parliamentary inquiry. Um, even if we set a debate time, we don't, other than the current motion on the table, we don't have to use it all, right? If we set a 10 minute debate no, time. No, we don't have to use it all. <laughs> <laughs> the chair would be really happy if we didn't use it all. Right, right. So that, so that, so that right, no, I agree. It, it's hilarious, but that's my point. So if we set longer debate times. No. That, that, that was your parliamentary inquiry. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cronengold, your motion. Uh, I move that if fewer than five speakers have spoken on, on either side, uh, then the thresholds for extending debate uh, be uh, dropped to 50% for that motion. I'm sorry, is that, I, didn't, I didn't catch what I said. Normally, the threshold for extending debate is two-thirds. Uh, my motion is that we change the motion on the floor that if uh, two-thirds, uh, two if fewer than two-thirds have... Um, Sorry, fewer than five, thank you, um, uh, have spoken on, um, on a given side, then uh, the threshold drops to a regular 50% so that the body can extend debate if they wish to more easily. So you mean to amend the motion by substitution so that the vote threshold for extent debate if there have been five or fewer speakers is 50%? Fewer than, than five. Fewer than five. Four, fewer. fewer than five. Fewer than five. Not inclusive. Or less than. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Point of order. Mr. Yellow, what is your point of order? Uh, Germain, yes. I do not believe. The uh, microphone. microphone. Yes, actually. Uh, this is a germaneness argument. I believe that. In attempting to alter that other section, it would not be germane to the original amendment and therefore would have to be offered as a separate amendment, not while Mr. Breitbart's amendment is still on the floor. Yes, I do need to rule on the germaneness, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to rule on it. <laughs> I believe it is germane because it is all about debate time and influence based on debate about how people vote. So I'm going to rule that it is germane. There's a motion to call the question. Is there a second? Second. We are on the motion to amend by substitution. Is there any objection to calling the question? Seeing none, we're going to vote on Mr. Cronengold's motion to amend by substitution. All those in favor? Can you make it very clear what we're voting on? Sure. <laughs> we are going to vote on do you think I feel? <laughs> reducing the vote threshold for the motion to extend debate from two thirds to a majority vote if fewer than five people have spoken at the end of debate. That, that is to make it as the 
base motion. Fewer than five. Per side or fewer than five total? Total. No, it's per side. Per side. Per side. I misunderstood the motion. It's per side. So we are, we are voting on whether to amend the motion to be that. Does everybody understand? All right. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right. Hands down. All those opposed? All right. So now we're back to Mr. Breitbart's motion. The motion failed. Yes. Is there any objection to calling the question on Mr. Breitbart's motion to limit debate to one minute per person? Well, in less, one, one minute, less than 10 minutes, two minutes per person if there is greater than 10 minutes debate time. It's 10 minutes. 10 minutes or greater. Point of clarification. And if it's 10 minutes, is it higher or lower? Higher. Higher. Okay, so it's less than 10 minutes, it's one minute. 10 minutes, 10 minutes or less? 10 minutes. 10 minutes gets one more than 10 gets two. As the speaker, as the maker of the motion, 10 minutes or less or fewer gets one minute per person. And 11 minutes, since we only do whole integers here, or higher. Five minutes per side gets one. All right. Is there any objection to calling the question? Seeing none. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed? <laughs> that motion fails. We are now on B2.2. December is good enough. This is a motion to move the cutoff for members who can be nominators for the Hugo to December rather than January 31st. Right? All right, we are setting debate time. I have suggested 10 minutes. Is there any objection? None. <laughs> There's an objection. Are th what are the other suggested debate times? Two. Two. Eight. 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 I heard a three out there? Two, two, eight, two eight, six, <laughs> and the 10. I will remind people, the more time we spend setting debate is more time than we're spending debating. Debate. But. Um, all right, we're going to start with 10 minutes. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? Uh, I think the no's have, have it. Eight minutes? All right, all those opposed? I'm going to say the ayes have it. Eight minutes. All right, Mr. Yellow. No, sorry. We're on B.2.3. Two years are good enough. For what? A motion. Mm -hmm. uh, Cliff Dunn, I would like to move to postpone indefinitely B.2.3.1. We're not on B.2.3.1 yet. <laughs> You want to move to postpone indefinitely? We haven't introduced. We can only postpone indefinitely and make motions. That's my amendment. Right. Yes, it's an amendment to the substitution, but I don't believe you can postpone. There's no point in postponing indefinitely. Postponing indefinitely takes two thirds. Defeating the amendment takes even. All right. Now that we're going to set debate on B.2.3. Didn't we just do that? It's to limit the nominating pool to the current Worldcon members and the members of the previous year was Worldcon. Oh, so I missed, okay, I missed, I missed Cutting off next year's Worldcon, correct. It's not on the we're setting debate. I've suggested 10 minutes. Is there any objection to 10 minutes? Two. All right, we have 10 and 2. Any other numbers? 6, 8, 12, and 4. All right, we're going to start with 12. 12 and going down evenly. 12 minutes of debate. All those in favor? All right, all those opposed? 
10 minutes of debate. All those in favor? All those opposed? I'm going to say the ayes have it. 10 minutes of debate. We now have an amendment by substitution. For what purpose does the member rise? Well, say what the motion is. Yes. Mr. Yallo noted that the maker of the motion, which is B.2.3.1, has priority as the speaker, Mr. Yallo. Please use the microphone. This is a motion about this year's Yugos. I believe philosophically that this year's Yugos should be picked by this year's members of the World Science Fiction Society throughout the process. That we purely are saying this is what this year's society has chosen and therefore that's all. Those are the only people who get to nominate. Those are the only people who get to vote. Administratively, it is also much cleaner because you are not required to deal with getting various copies of various data sets, particularly with dealing with issues such as data protection laws in the various European countries that make it difficult to get data sets across international boundaries. All right. Is there a speech? against the amendment to substitute. Mr. Harris, as the maker of the base motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my speech against is very simple. Um, having put to forward with the group that worked with me, the um, two years are good enough. When we expanded the pool from one year to two years and then three, adding the third year, which is the future year, creates a huge amount of admin because the future year is a moving target with new members joining all the time and it adds relatively few people to the voting pool. It's because obviously that third year has only just come in for, the, for this year's Hugo's. Um, the Helsinki voters as of January 31st this year probably only added a few hundred to a voter pool of six or seven thousand. Okay, after they do. Debate need not be factual. Sorry. Um, the, my concern about removing the previous year is in a year where there is a small world con, so let's imagine we're in Japan or New Zealand, your voter pool for that one year could be down to a couple of thousand members total, and that makes the whole system far more gameable for those who wish to be bad actors. A two year, including the previous year, which we have now, which is a large fixed pool, because that's the final total for a Worldcon, means we're usually going to have at least five or six um, thousand people voting, even when this year's Worldcon is in a small year. So unfortunately, whilst I like Mr. Yallo's philosophy, I believe in principle it exposes the awards to being much more easily gained in smaller years. Mr. Kowalczyk, for what purpose? Come on up. Still, still, Rick Kowalczyk. Uh, one year is the way it used to be. Things actually didn't get remarkably better when it went to two years. Um, going, leaving it two years means you can still uh, have the point that Colin raised. If, say, for example, is uh, something happens and 19 is in Paris and 20 is in New Zealand, you'd still have a very small pool in 20. Making it one year actually helps the current year because you would get more supporting memberships. And we probably would not all be crying about how broke we are now if this uh, amendment had actually uh, been enforced because Mid-American would have more supporting membership income. Ms. Bemis. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Uh, we'll bring you the mic. Yeah. Point of parliamentary inquiry. I thought we were doing setting times, not having debate on the motions today. This is an amendment by substitution to the piece of new business, which means it's in order. It was just sent to us ahead of time. So by virtue of being so, it gets in the agenda. 
So we are currently debating substituting Mr. Yallo's motion B.2.3.1 for B.2.3. Ms. So um, I'm still Rachel Axe. So I completely sympathize with the I, with the fact that this is hurt supporting membership income for conventions, and you know we're crying about we're broke. But I also want to say that if you cut off the the second year, you're you're going to have a lot of actual people who want to participate crying that they're broke because. Um, my main interest is seeing that the Hugo Awards are accessible to as many fans as possible, and not all fans are necessarily even going to be able to afford a supporting membership. There were years where I couldn't afford a supporting membership when I was a graduate student. So if, if, if you can give people more bang for their, their buck, so to speak, you are going to get more participation, and the more participation we have, the more robust the awards are going to be. So I think, you know, two years... Uh, Two years are better than one year. Thanks. Is there another speech in favor? Ms. Secor. Uh, chair, yeah. uh, as a Sergeant of Arms, may I make a quick note? Yes. Um, I'm going to be direct. I'm hearing uh, commentary from the audience when some people stand up to make a motion or something that they are displeased with that. Please stop. If I can hear you, then you know that's an issue, and it's, it's discouraging to people who are trying to participate here. Thank you. I would like to point out that this is a notion about who gets to nominate. Right now, we are allowing three years worth of people to nominate, but only one year's worth of people to vote. So what we're actually doing is we are expanding the voting pool to people who would otherwise only have been nominators by saying to them, hey, if you care enough to nominate, you probably care enough to vote also. You'd have to buy a supporting membership to do that anyway. So I don't think that this necessarily has a huge impact on participation because what it does is it flips nominators into voters and that is what actually impacts the awards. Is there a speech against the motion? You got you, no, you. you go ahead. That did. Yeah, so my, my name is Dave Wallace, um, and I, I oppose this. Last year was my first Worldcon, and I didn't join until after the nominations came out. Now, admittedly, you know, it was in response to what was going on with the puppies and everything, but um, recognizing that if this passes, you only get, you, you don't get the whole membership of the current Worldcon. You only get those who joined before, be it January 31st or December 31st, the people who are thinking ahead. Um, it also means that if people are trying to game the system, they can organize themselves and all join before the deadline, and other people who may be opposed to that may not have gotten their act together or gotten the word that something's going on and not be uh, there. Whereas, again, if you have the two-year system, which is, I think, what we're uh, heading for, um, the population of the previous Worldcon is still there as a large body of people who presumably have opinions and are willing to uh, nominate. And I, I, I like the idea of two years. I, I think getting rid of the third year is fine. But, um, I, I would like to keep it the way it is because I think it does mean that there's a representative pool there available to nominate. Thank you. Mr. Buff, for, for what purpose does the member rise? Okay. Is, do you have a parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Quinn? You have to recognize this. Yeah. So I, I, I recognize Mr. Buff. Do you, Ms. Kovar, do you have a parliamentary inquiry? Okay. Warren Buff. Uh, I know I, I did hear the argument that you know it would only include those people who join early. However, as the minority of people in this room who've written a Worldcon budget know, getting people to join early does very good things for our decision-making ability. We can have a better Worldcon if we encourage people to join early. Is there a, for, for, for what purpose is memorized? Uh, 
she has been. Yeah. I s Could you state your name? Oh, my name is Adrian Foster, and um, I do respect uh, the maker's motion on this. I could see where it's coming from, but I can also see it having a domino effect because the whole reason we started the two-year process was because of that cutout off date. And if we take take that the the previous year's um, nominators off it, then then we should remove the cutoff date as well. So. Um, Anyway, that, that's my, my feeling on the matter. I think it's a logistical issue, too. Mr. Olson, for what purpose? Point of inquiry. How much debate time do we have on this process? It gets the 10 minutes that 30, was. 30 seconds against. Or did you mean it is left? Mm -hmm. There's. 30 seconds against, um, two and a half minutes for. Mr. Kowalczyk, for what purpose does the member rise? There are, I believe there are members wishing to speak who have not spoken yet. Ms. Rudolph, are you speaking in favor? She has 30 seconds. No, she has two and a half minutes. We acknowledge that, and I think that this um, amendment acknowledges that the nomination process is broken in the Hugo Awards. Can you speak into the microphone? Okay. Hold the microphone. You can take it off there. We acknowledge that the nomination process of the Hugo Awards has some serious deficits, and we think that this will help focus um, the nominations on the people who have the most, um, th that care the most about the outcome of the Hugos. Keep in mind that this only impacts nominations, not voting. Voting has always been the current year members. The nominations, um, having to extend them to the prior and, past, and, and future year um, is a huge impact on the administration of the awards of, of the nomination process. Um, I think that a $40 or sometimes $50 supporting membership fee is an extremely low barrier to entry. People do not have to have attending memberships in order to nominate. They would have to have supporting memberships, which is that 40 perhaps 50 maybe $35 fee. Um, and you get benefits from that fee, and some of those benefits are the ability to nominate and vote on the Hugos. If you're invested in this process, you are willing to make the sacrifice to not buy the two hardcover books or maybe one hardcover and one paperback that that $40 would have gotten for you. And it will also discourage people who are not invested in the process from coming back year after year in order to go through the process and have to pay to destroy something that they do not appreciate. Thank you. People still trying to speak. So. What? I, I, for what? Can you? I'm um, speech. Okay. There is third. The guy is speaking. There, he is, there's 30 seconds both for and against, yeah. roughly. Are the people standing the only people who would like to continue to speak to this motion, or are there are others who would like to speak? All right. Um, Ms. Hayes, do you want to speak against, since you've been standing? Lisa Hayes, I was going to speak in favor of this motion, but the gentleman over here, argument swayed me greatly. I believe that any member who became a member this year, a few hours ago, or the first day of the convention, should get something for that membership, and I would like to see the previous year continue to be put in the pool, the pool of people who can nominate. Is there a speech in favor of the motion? 
Mr. Shepard? I'm philosophically with Mr. Kowalczyk. Mr. Shepard was offering to allow Mr. Kowalczyk to speak, but I... One other thing came up, which I remembered when we were discussing this. When first went from one year to two years, it was hard to buy a membership. You had to mail in a check or you had to go to a convention. There's this thing called the internet now, which makes it very easy to buy a membership. And the bar to buying a supporting membership has been lowered significantly since it went to two years. All right. Seeing as how debate time has virtually expired, I'm going to put the question to the floor. Move your call. It's out of order. There's less than one minute left of debate time. So, all right. So see, is there any objection to putting the question? No? All right. So this is going to be a vote on the amendment by substitution to substitute B.2.3.1 for B.2.3. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? The noes have it. The amendment fails. We are now on B.2.4. Ms. Secor. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Did that debate we just had on the amendment by substitution use up the 10 minutes that we had allotted to talk about that amendment on its own in the main, in the no. main part of the meeting? No. Okay, no. You, you get the uh, 10 minutes back every day. Okay. <laughs> All right. B point, Ms. Kovar, for what purpose does the member rise? <laughs> Please come to the microphone. Mm -hmm. um, I used to follow Congress, and I'm getting confused. <laughs> so, so would the chair please, when doing a vote, first of all, would you let us know when five minutes has been used up? You know, give us a, no, that's your job. Um, let us know when time's been used up, and clarify at the end or partway if need be, okay, we're voting on this amendment, which means X, Y, Z, and then we vote on what it's being, what it is amended. Okay. As I, I said, will, if even I'm getting confused, it's bad. I will do my best. We are now going to set debate time on B.2.4. Is the slide? I'm sorry. Sorry. Three-stage voting. I have seen Mr. Blog, for what purpose does the member rise? Uh, move to postpone indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. Second. Wait. Question. Yes. Sorry, in following up with what the last speaker said, can we clarify what these things are? Because we even, and I'm, I know I'm a little nervous. I was attempting to, I didn't get the chance. Right, okay, sorry. <laughs> well then, follow up questions at a proper juncture from the last vote we took. Can we clarify what that was as well? <laughs> even if The I'm last not. vote we took was to defeat the amendment by substitution, so B.2.3 is the current state of that motion. Oh, okay, so. Reducing three to two. Reducing three to two. Okay, so the amendment was either three years or two years, and we've said we're going to debate. All right. Okay. There is a motion to postpone indefinitely. Made the motion. Mr. Blog made the motion to postpone indefinitely. There was a second. There is four minutes of debate time for a postpone indefinitely. Two minutes in favor and two minutes against. Postpone three-stage voting. Yes. Postpone indefinitely means that it will, the question was, what does postpone indefinitely mean? It's on the slide now. Postpone that, indefinitely. We went through this slide at the beginning. So there's four minutes of debate time. It requires a two-thirds vote in favor, and that means that this item of business will not appear at any other meeting this year. It can, of course, be resubmitted next year. All right, Mr. Blog, as the maker of the motion, 
you have the right to speak in favor of it. I cannot describe how much I loathe this amendment. Um, for one thing, and I'll give you an example, the second stage voting, which involves you know, whether or not we want to, to allow things on the, uh, on, the, um, on the final ballot. For example, I absolutely hate Doctor Who. I cannot stand that show, and I never want to see it get another Hugo again. So if I see, uh, you know, it's like, are these acceptable? I will not put Doctor Who on the ballot. I will not nominate Doctor I will not approve of Doctor Who just on general principles of how much I hate that show. Whereas Every other people may just only like Doctor Who, and they will only put Doctor Who uh, as their um, as what they approve of. And this is not this actually encourages slate voting. You can have the Game of Thrones fans who will only vote for Game of Thrones versus the Doctor Who fans who will only approve of Doctor Who and forget everything else. Not to mention the fact that this adds, this adds to an additional stage of voting, which gives the Hugo administrators even more work to do. I saw Mr. Harris pop up first. I did see you, Mr. Quinn, but I. I wasn't late, so I didn't yeah. That, yeah. that is true. I don't propose to speak to the substance of this today because that's what we have time for tomorrow. I'm asking people to allow this to be debated because we're in a very, very serious period for the Hugos where the reputation and integrity of the awards are under serious threat. Now, whatever motions we go forward with, you know. I, James and I have some differences, but we, we agree on one thing. You know, it is not helpful uh, to be in a fight where you know a complex democracy is fighting basically some people who can do what they want very quickly. We need to be brave enough to look at the solutions and make strong responses, or we're basically going to be here in two or three years with no Hugo's worth having. And I think it's important that we find the time and energy to properly debate these alternatives tomorrow, whether we're in favour of the individual motions or not. Because otherwise, basically, we are all going to lose. Is there, a, Mr. Cronin Gold? Are you speaking in favor of the motion to postpone? I make a motion. Oh. Yeah, don't believe. Postpone indefinitely is not amendable. What motion? Yeah. What, what, motion? what motion do you want to make? Oh. Is there a second to call the question? Can I call the question? Yes. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to vote. You have a query or what? Sorry, uh, I'm not sure if this is parliamentary or not, but to repeat my last question, I know that some people needed it. I wasn't asking for clarification on what postpone indefinitely means. I'm trying to read this quickly, and I'm still not familiar with what three-stage voting is. If we're going to vo vote to... Def that's, that's substantive debate on the motion with, that will happen tomorrow. Well, no, no, it's not a debate on the motion. If we, if we vote to postpone something it's, indefinitely, it's, then... It's, it's in the agenda, you just... Yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to have to read the agenda because we don't have time to explain the entire memo, the entire motion right now. Then Even you it just vote against to postpone if you want to. All move right. On. So the okay. motion on the floor, or the question on the floor, is to postpone three-stage voting indefinitely. Which means to kill it. Is there an object? well, objection? To calling the question. Well, there was a motion to call the question. There was a motion to call the question. So we're. We're going to vote in favor, it or we're going to vote. It requires a two-thirds vote in favor of postponing indefinitely. Oh, yeah. Nope. No, 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 of course, it's the majority of the question. Vote on calling the question. Vote on calling the question. You need to vote on calling the question on the motion, postponing the question. The motion the question. The indefinitely. And you need to ask for a show of hands if people still wish to speak, because that's part of our, our motion. Our motion to vote on calling the question. Be nice to him, he's young. It's my first time, OK? Um, all right, how many people are still wishing to speak on the motion to postpone indefinitely? I see Ben over Two there. People. Two people, all right. So there is a motion to call the question. We have, and it has been seconded. We have to vote on calling the question. So all those in favor of calling the question, raise your hands. It passed. Yeah. All hands down, all those opposed? Mm. All right. The question is called. We are now voting on whether to postpone three-stage voting indefinitely. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely? Hands down. All those opposed? The motion fails. Three-stage voting stays on the uh, agenda, and we still have to set debate time for it. I have suggested 20 minutes. Is there any objection? 
So we have 20 and 10. 18. 18, 2. <laughs> Any others? 16. 16. All right, we're going to start with 20. All those in favor of 20 minutes of debate time, raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? The ayes have it. 20 minutes. I am now going to suggest that we move to nominations for the Mark Protection Committee since we have to do that today and we are running perilously low on time. Is there any objection to moving to the Mark Protection Committee report and nominations? Seeing none, all right, Mr. Stanley as the committee chair. Where's the NPC report? Yeah, I put this in the wrong place, so. Um, Mr. Chairman, I am Kevin Stanley. I am chairman of the World Science Fiction Society's Mark Protection Committee. For those of you who are new, that is the only permanent body of the World Science Fiction Society. Its primary job is to take care of protecting and registering the service marks of the World Science Fiction Society. Those are like trademarks, things like the word Worldcon and Hugo Award. We are also incidentally responsible for maintaining the permanent websites of the organization, worldcon.org, nasfic.org, uh, wisfus.org, and thehugoaward.org. The full report is with you. I won't go into it in detail. You don't want that. But I want to call attention to two particular things that have been projects of the committee now for something on the order of a decade. We have finally managed to get full control of the Worldcon, NASFIC, and WISFIS websites and rearrange them and get them to a much more easily manageable form. Uh, and I'm really grateful to all the people who helped on that. We've been trying to do that for a long time. It's a lot better now. The other item before us, and we have been had the policy of registering the service marks of the organization in every place that has held at least two world cons. Uh, however, the only place we'd ever actually gotten it done was the United States. For this purpose, the European Union is considered one country, and we have been working on registering some of the important, most important service marks with the European Intellectual Property Organization. I'm very pleased to report that as of this time, we have received registration on the word Worldcon and on the Hugo Award logo. And having dealt with several objections that we had to handle, sometime later this year, uh, I expect the registration on the Hugo Award, it's on Hugo Award itself, the word the is not part of it, but the registration on Hugo Award itself should go through. Those are our three most important service marks. And just incidentally, uh, nobody knows what Brexit will do to that. So we're not going to discuss that here. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, are there any questions for Mr. Stanley? Seeing none, we are going to move to opening nominations for the Mark Protection Committee. The three members of the committee whose terms are expiring this year are Mr. Stanley, Mr. Illingworth, and Mr. Ben Yallo. Are there any nominations to... I nominate the retiring members. Is there a second to nominate? Second. second. Are there any other nominations? The... the, the Nomination was for the three retiring members, so the three people whose names I just read, those three. Are there any other nominations? Rick had a question. Kevin Stanley, who the other two? Tim. And Beth. Yes. He's getting there. Point of primary inquiry. If no one else nominates, does that mean that we don't actually have to have a vote? Yes. That is, yeah. that is precedent. Yes. It would have to wait till tomorrow, but we would not have a vote. We couldn't dispense with a vote today, but it would be <coughs> dispensed uh, with. Yes. Well, that's. Have to sign that, that they there would be the, the time for write-ins, which is why we couldn't dispense with it today. Is there, any, is there a motion to close nominations? Move to close. Second. 
Is there any objection to closing nominations? Seeing none, we go back to B.2.5. For what purpose does the member rise? Move to postpone indefinitely. So there is a motion to postpone B.2.5 additional finalists indefinitely. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Page second. numbers. Sorry. 16. That, yes. Is it possible to move um, the mic, please? My. Is it possible to move to call the question at this time? We don't have a question to call. Oh, yeah, it, it, yeah. Was, seconded. it was seconded. It was seconded. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, on, there has to be one speech in No. Favor. Nope. No. He can decline. Oh. OK. Okay. I, I so move. Is there a second to? Oh, can we, can we take a second? Oh, sure. I've got to figure out where. We're going to hold up just for a second for the secretary. B25. I know, but I've got to find it. OK. B25. <coughs> For what purpose does the member rise? I, I think it's parliamentary. Uh, I'm new to this. So there is currently a, a motion to call the question on the floor. We're just waiting for the secretary. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering are these. Uh, these yes, please are, state your name and speak uh, into the. Hyman Rosen. On these uh, movements to uh, postpone indefinitely, it just seems we're uh, just advancing the debate we would have on it to today instead of waiting until the, the time of debate. The debate on postpone indefinitely is not meant to be a substantive debate on the motion. It's meant to be on whether or not we should debate it at all. I understand, but so far it has been, though. People have been making substantive arguments. <laughs> all right, there is a motion. Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chairman, am I right to uh, understand that you have ruled the motion on the previous question to close debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely in order? Yes. I raise a point of order that under the standing rules, the motion for the previous question is not in order when either or both sides have not had a chance to speak to the motion at all. Well, we offered him a chance. <laughs> there is another side to the motion, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> all right. Is, yes. That, so the speech in fa your point is well taken. The speech in favor will go first. I apologize. The motion is not in order. Thank you. Uh, Aaron Davies. Um, this is the most anti-democratic of all the Hugo modification options. As far as I can tell, the correct subtitle for this should be screw democracy. Uh, the, the, I am as offended by this, at least as the previous speaker was by the three-stage voting. Let us all. Ms. Hayes as the maker of the motion. Thank you. As the maker of the motion, I will be the first to admit it has numerous flaws. However, I believe it deserves the chance to at least be debated. That is all I have to say. All right. Is there anybody else wishing? Ms. Secor, for what purpose does the member rise? You have the floor. At this point, a motion to call a motion would be in order. Hi, everybody. I actually think that this motion is completely antithetical to the spirit of the Hugos, and therefore we should just get it off the thing and not even talk about it. That's what the motion to postpone indefinitely does. It's not about, is this a good motion or a bad motion? It's about, should we even talk about it? And I actually think the answer in this case is probably no. Is, there's a motion to call the question. Is, there's a second. Is there any objection to calling the question? Objection. Are, who still wishes to speak to the motion to postpone indefinitely? I see one hand, two hands. OK. There, there are people wishing to still speak. We're going to vote on whether to call the question. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. 
All those, okay, hands down, all those opposed? The ayes have it, the uh, question is called. We are now going to vote on whether to postpone B.2.5 additional finalists indefinitely. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed. I'm going to say the ayes have it. Is it two-thirds? Two-thirds, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's two-thirds. I don't think it's two-thirds. Would, would we like to do a serpentine vote? Yes. 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 Serpentine. All right, I'm going to ask for some help from the sergeants at arms, and we're going to start on this side of the room, and we're going to do that whole section first in favor, then the middle section in favor, then the other side of the room in favor, and then we'll start back over on this side with those against. So all those in favor, please, if you can, stand. Please take the motion so they know what they're voting against. The motion is to postpone B.2.5 indefinitely. Just that section? Just, well, you can all stand. We're going to count that section first. Seven, eight, nine, and 11, right. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, the norm, we're going to start with no, you. No, no. 22. no, you're 21. 21. 21. You're 21. 22. Judy, 20. 23. 24. 25. 26. 27. 28. 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Was there anybody wishing to? I think they counted. So I'm 81. Anybody else wishing to vote in favor that did not get counted? All right, 81 in favor. All those opposed, please rise if you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, more. Uh, 16. 17. 18. 19. 22. 36. Somebody do the math. So uh, is 40, so pass the ayes have it. The motion to postpone indefinitely passes. <laughs> Figures 81 for and 36 against is more than two thirds. Is it more than two thirds? Yeah. 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 You double the numbers. Yeah, that would be less 72 than to 36 would be exactly two thirds. Yeah. It's more than 72, so it's more than two thirds. All right, we are now on B.2.6 EPH plus. Mr. Blob, for what purpose does the member rise? No, yeah. Two thirds. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I see what you said. Okay. Please come to the microphone. It's not only business meeting, it's exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we move EPH plus definitely until, at, until Sunday of the, business me of, the main, of the business meeting. Second. 
Wait, we didn't set a time. Wait a after, so it so it would appear after the after we vote on EPH uh, Maine. And four and six, right? Um, would there be, and I also just for the record, would the would the nominators of um, EPH can we move EPH plus to between EPH and e, and four and six on Sunday? You you can if that's your motion. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's fine with the. I I just want to make. I would rather please the uh, Joshua uh, among the. And the uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I saw you there. This is John. Okay. Hold. Hmm? I would rather wait until after four and six. Are we talking about? Four and six. We haven't set a time on four and five. We postponed it. No, we did. Oh, we did. Okay. The motion is the motion to be after four and six. Yeah. If, 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 they, if the makers of Gordon No, it's your motion, Mr. Blog. <laughs> up to you. You have to make the call. If the makers of 4 and 6 and EPH would prefer um, EPH plus B after um, 4 and 6, then I um, move that. Okay, so the motion currently is to postpone EPH plus definitely until after 4 and 6 on Sunday. Is there a second? So the is there any objection? See, oh, Miss Hayes. All right, Mr. Blob, would you like to give a speech in favor? No. Miss Hayes. <laughs> Can I have one second before? Yes. What is what is the motion on the floor? I've, I've to to postpone this definite until after four and six or something. This B P H plus. E P H. EPH. I would like to see the debate on EPH plus before we discuss EPH. If one is a plus, then it must be something better. So I'd like to go and jump ahead of that, and we don't even have to deal with the first one that isn't as better. Is there a speech in favor of the motion to postpone definitely? Mr. Quinn. Unfortunately, even if we do pass EPH plus, for this year, EPH still matters. So um, we, we can't really do it the other way around. So that's all. Um, and can I, can I move to call, call the question? Yes. yes. Is there a second to calling the question? Is there any objection to calling the question? I will remind people that the way to show no objection is to not say anything, not say no. <laughs> All right, we are going to then call the question on postponing EPH plus definitely until after 4 and 6 on Sunday. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All those opposed, the motion passes. However, we still have to set debate time on it. I have suggested 12 minutes. Is there any objection? 12, 10, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, there is nothing beyond the <laughs> To restate my question for those who didn't hear and for the uh, camera, the question is how much time have we currently allocated on Sunday for scheduled items, not the how much time we have for the meeting? 10 minutes for so 4 and 6 and 20 minutes for the EPA. So half an hour of debate time has been set for Sunday. No. Huh? We move nominee diversity out. That's right. Yeah. All right. So I have 30, 16, 12, and 10. Are there any suggest other suggestions? 20? 20. All right. We're going to start with 30. All those in favor of 30 minutes of debate time, please raise your hands. All those opposed, motion fails. 20 minutes of debate time. All right. All those, put your hands, all those opposed, motion fails. 16 minutes of debate time. All right. All those opposed? I'm gonna say the ayes have it, 16 minutes of debate time. We are now on B.2.7, defining North America. <laughs> Mr. Buff. Uh, page 23. 
<laughs> this is on page. What was the time on EP? For what? Oh, what? He wants it plus. Oh, plus was six. I have suggested eight minutes. Is there an objection? See, is there other suggested times? Two. Two, Two four, the original eight. Six. six. <laughs> Should we just start it? Okay. Eight minutes. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? Motion fails. Six. six. All those in favor? All right, all those opposed? That fails. Four minutes, all those in favor? All right, all those opposed? Ooh, that's close. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that fails, yeah. Two minutes, all those in favor? <laughs> and all those opposed? Two minutes of debate time. We are now on B.2.9, universal suffrage. I, eight. 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 See, I just want to get... B.2.8, retrospective improvements. I have suggested six minutes. Is there any objection? Nope. Mr. Yalo, for what purpose? I move to the point to be divided. Uh, ben? Yeah. Yes, please come use the microphone. <laughs> I'm moving a division. Right now, the proposed 313-1 talks about basically letting us cover the years during World War II. And I'm personally very much in favor of... This is debated. Of, Specify what the division is and we can... Uh, the division would be to separate out Sorry. the vote on 313-1 and the debate on 313-2 since 313.2 addresses the question of years during which no award won, I believe, therefore, it is a separate, I believe it is a separate yeah. question so, well, and therefore the, can be divided. But forgetting debate on the motion, 3.13.1 would be the first item. 3.13.2 would be the second item. Where does 3.13.3 go? Exactly. <laughs> if, e if either of them passes, then 313.3 would apply to I just, whichever part I just passed. want to be clear. Yeah. But, this will, but I believe that they are sufficiently separately Okay, there is a motion to divide the question to 3.13.1 and 3.13.3, and then separately 3.13.2 and 3.13.3. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection? I don't... Uh, under Adam still, um, I, I would move to, to divide uh, all three because I think they do have separate effect and they don't depend on each other. I, 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 would, like, I would like the ability to, to adopt 3.13.3 .3 without the other two. Because I think it's a useful. Yeah. Uh, that that would be a second order motion, which is not in order because the base motion was not an amendment to substitute. Mm, you would have to uh, defeat the uh, motion to divide the way you didn't like it and put and make a new motion to divide the way you did. <laughs> <laughs> is there any objection to dividing the question the way it was stated earlier? And I can restate it. Yes. Okay. Please use them. Christopher Hatton, we just decided to put three uh, three point thirteen point one with thirteen three thirteen three and separately three thirteen two with three thirteen three. What happens to three thirteen three if one of the other two passes and the other fails? Does it come into effect or not? If either one passes, three point thirteen point three passes. It does? Okay. Yes. 
<laughs> and Lynn gets to fix up the numbering. Are there any objections to the division? Miss. Oh, hang on. Right, give me a second here. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, Kevin Stanley. Um, Mr. Chairman, is the motion to divide the question uh, debatable? I honestly can't remember. <laughs> It's not in Sturgis. It's not even votable in Sturgis. But no, uh, it's not debatable. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, seeing as it's not debatable, we're going to put the question to the floor. <laughs> All right. This question is on whether to divide this uh, B.2.8 into two different questions, 3.3. 3.13.1 and 3 in one question, and point 0.2 and point 0.3 in the other question. All those in favor, please. Uh, in the middle of a vote, you can't. Yeah, that's out of order. We're in the middle of a vote. Um, it's too yeah. late. Vote, take the vote and then vote. All right, all those in favor, please raise your hands. That's going to be a majority. All right. All those opposed, please raise your hands. Okay. The question is divided. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Stanley, for what purpose does the member rise? I'm, I'm, well, I was simply, I originally was planning to debate something here, but I'm going to move to divide this question, to redivide this question, so each of the three clauses is a single, is a separate proposal. I believe they're all independent of each other. I ask unanimous consent of the meeting that we divide this question into three separate questions. Is there questions. any objection to divide it, uh, Mr. Buff? All right, I, I tried. Seeing <laughs> how. <laughs> Seeing, however, as the motion to divide the question is not debatable, we're just going to vote on the question. All those in favor of dividing it into three parts, each clause being its own part, please raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? The motion passes. The question is divided into three parts. So now there's six minutes of debate on each part as a default. Yes. 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 So you now triple the debate time. Debate time. Oh, I mean, please. Uh, <laughs> All right. Hold on. 3.13A, 3.13B, and 3.13C. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. By the way, that was changing something previously about it, but it was more. Than so 2.8.1, 2.2, 2.3. All right. We have not yet set debate time on retros retrospective improvement. However, we are at 10 minutes to. So I'm going to. Ask, is there any objection to six minutes? For each. Six for each. Yes. yes. Uh, two All right, I'm going to do this. We're just going to do it all of them. So it's six for each, two for each, or four for each. All right. All those in favor of six minutes for each, please raise your hand. All those opposed? I'm going to say the no's have it. Four minutes each. All those opposed? I'm going to say the ayes have it. Four minutes each. We are now on B.2.9, universal suffrage. Thank you. We have a suggested time of six minutes. Is there any objection? Seeing none, six minutes is set. B.2.10, non-transferability of voting rights. The suggested time is eight minutes. Is there any objection to eight minutes? Seeing none, eight minutes is adopted. B.2.11. <laughs> Mr. Blob, for what purpose does the member rise? As if I can't guess. Which one are you objecting to? I move to postpone B.2.11 uh, indefinitely. Is second. What happened to 10? We put six minutes on. No, eight eight minutes. minutes. There was no objection to the eight minutes. It will get debated tomorrow or the day after. All right. 
As there's been a second, would you like to give a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely, Mr. Bob? What more do I have to say about Young Adult Award that hasn't been said year after year after year? A speech against Mr. Riccardi. And yes, Mr. Barkley, I see you. I remain Dave McCarty. For people who have been following the business meeting for the last decade, I think you recognize me as somebody that's been vigorously opposed to many of the YA proposals that have been brought to this meeting. I believe that this one deserves to be debated. Is there a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely? Is there a second to calling the question? Is there any objection to calling the question? Seeing none, we are going to call the question. The question is on postponing B.2.11 Young Adult Award indefinitely. All those in favor, please, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All those opposed, please raise your hands. Nope. Yeah. The motion fails. There is a suggested debate time of eight minutes. Wait, wait. 20. 20. 28. 28. Anything else? 14, 16, 16 10. 10. Anything else? We've got 20, 14, 16, 10, and 8. 18, all right. <laughs> Anything else? We're going to start with 20. All those in favor of 20 minutes of debate time, raise your hands. All those opposed, that fails. 18 minutes of debate time, all those in favor. All right, all those opposed, that fails. 16, all right, all those opposed, I'm gonna say that fails. 14 minutes of debate time. All those opposed? I think that passes. Yeah, I'm gonna say that passes too. 14 minutes of debate time. As we have reached 12.54, I would like to have a motion to adjourn for the day. Are there any objections to adjourning for the day? Seeing none, we are adjourned. <laughs>